descent. Um, but there are a lot of uh, inference methods already. So in this work, we uh, propose a relaxation-based inference method, um, and we solve it with uh, gradients. Okay, so let, let's uh, look at uh, how it fits uh, with the existing inference methods. Okay, so, um, well, MCMC, if you run it long enough, gives you the right answer, um, but uh, you don't know, you don't really know when to terminate. Uh, variational inference terminates, but um, doesn't necessarily give you the right answer, and I believe the propagation does either, but you know, might work in practice. Uh, and uh, so, so relaxation is uh, uh, a method that terminates and uh, approximately correct. So uh, approximately correct means uh, the answer is within some uh, uh, multiplicative and uh, additive constant of the right answer. Okay, and in this work, we, uh, we propose a uh, new relaxation that's uh, suitable for inferencing uh, RDMs and uh, others. Okay, so um, some, some theory tells us that you cannot have uh, two ES in any of the rows because even uh, inferencing a fairly uh, restricted model like the RBM is uh, NP hard. Okay, even approximately. So, uh, while well, you look at this hardness result, and you can wonder about uh, if you can make any uh, practical use of it. Again, here is how. So, how, how do you show the hardness of uh, like a problem like inference? You find a similar problem that's well known, well studied, and you reduce it to inference, right? Okay, but uh, if in the process of doing this, you need to make a lot of uh, unrealistic assumption on what uh, the the characteristic of the inference uh, problem. It probably means that uh, the problem B that you are reducing to inference A uh, is actually in general harder than A, and you can look at the best approximation uh, algorithm to solve B and uh, try to use it to uh, solve A. Okay, it's a very heuristic reasoning. So in, in this case, um, the reduction it did was uh, reducing from uh, the cut norm problem, which is a special case of the max cut problem. And this is a uh, uh, study in a fair amount of detail by uh, Alon and Nori in 2006. Okay, so that's uh, the, what this work is about. So you, we, we do uh, uh, inferencing in RBMs by the almost provably optimal approximation algorithm. Okay, and it's based on a semi-definite programming relaxation and random running from vectors. And to make it practical, we actually solve a low rank version of it as opposed to the OSDP. Uh, and then you use some <coughs> random running to get a variety of solutions. Okay, so what's uh, the just a quick uh, flash. Uh, so the theory is a little bit nicer in a bipartite case that includes RBMs, DBMs, and so on. But really, uh, uh, we will simplify the, the presentation and solve a more general problem, which is uh, what <coughs> you know, map inference in general MRF uh, that can be formulated as uh, the following IQP. Okay. So the only thing is from this slide is that we use W for the weight matrix. Okay. Uh, so, so I, and that problem, the map inference problem can be written as this IQP, and in the particular case for R, RBM, you just need to stick the weight matrix in the right place. Okay. So um, use my one minus one for convenience, but you can reduce the zero one case um, and the biases and the UN constraints to, to this point. So uh, now uh, going to the four example <coughs> slides. So this is uh, so what what is a relaxation, right? Um, so originally you have the, in, the integer program, and that's a combinatorial of the optimization problem. And the really a really simple thing you can do is just uh, uh, re relax the, the uh, set of two integers to the interval, okay, and then you can 
do like a gradient descent on, on the interval, but you will probably get stuck in a bad local optimal if you actually do this. But, uh, but this is one, one relaxation that's, that doesn't make the problem any easier. So uh, what we would actually look at is the uh, semi-definite program relaxation. Um, we'll stay on that this is kind of the main technical slide. So uh, well, on the top is the original problem. And you can uh, do the trace trick to just rewrite it a little bit and then uh, reparameterize XX transpose with a matrix. Okay, then, then you have a linear uh, object. Okay. Uh, so so we, we can look at the two sets of constraints and uh, conclude that the two problems are as written are exactly equivalent. <laughs> oh, but, uh, maybe some condition, weak condition. So why is that? So the, the diagonal s equal to one constraint comes from or well, minus one squared is one where it is one, uh, semi-definite will ensure that you can factorize it. Um, and, uh, well, and if you additionally put uh, the rank constraint, uh, the only factorization is of the above four. Okay, but the difficult part is the rank constraint. You don't really know how to optimize it. So, so these are equivalent problems, but if you drop the rank constraint, then the second problem is a convex problem that you can solve. Uh, and it's a, a little bit, uh, it's, a, and it's an approximation for the first problem. Okay, and uh, a way to visualize this is we did a, a reparameterization and drop the rank constraint. So previously you just you used rank one vectors for x, and now let's say uh, we, we just use this uh, full matrix for x where uh, each row here have a norm one that's from the diagonal or equal to one constant. Okay. So um, still, uh, the, uh, SDPs can be solved efficiently in, in theory. And there's uh, existing relaxation methods for inference, like even LP relaxation, QP relaxations. But uh, well, in practice, people can't even, uh, if you have a large enough problem, you can't even use uh, the LP relaxation because in, in, in a similar uh, way to the SDP, you, you are squaring the number of variables. Okay, so, um, so instead of solving the SDP, we solve a low rank version of it. So relaxing the constraint not to uh, no rank constraint, but to say rank less than k. Okay, and then just uh, reprioritize re the problem back and do a rank k factorization of s and do gradient descent on this uh, rank k uh, matrix. Okay, so now it looks like uh, instead of the full SDP, you have uh, kind of thinner uh, matrices. Okay, but compared to just uh, the relaxing uh, the, the two numbers to the interval, you are less likely to stuck at a local uh, to do local minimization this or maximization. So, okay, again <coughs> each uh, each row would have a one one as in a constraint. Okay, so once you solve the relaxed problem you can uh, get to the solutions you want by randomized rounding. So this is a classical Gaunt's Williamson style rounding where you pick a random hyperplane and have a real vector solution on one side, one to one value, on the other side, one to one value. Okay, so that's, that's the method. There's a, a rich amount of theory behind it, but uh, I guess we, we care more about it if, uh, if the method works here. Okay, so um, the f first test, just solve the just solve the math inference problem in RBM. So here you you, you find some a. So the, uh, so MNIST is uh, an a corresponding to an RBM training on MNIST. Random is random a and hard is a, a constructed instance of uh, a. That's uh, hard for Gibbs. And we compare it to a new a Gibbs and uh, and Groby, which is uh, off the shelf. Uh, QP 
solver. And the relaxation method does uh, well compared to the, the other methods here for comparably. Um, so we can look at uh, how it compares to a new gives in speed and objective. So y axis is the objective and the x axis is the number of steps it takes. So uh, red and blue are two versions of a new gives with red having higher temperature. Uh, and the dash line is the relaxed objective before running. So you can see that the rounded uh, uh, objective converges to a better value, perhaps slightly faster. <coughs> so um, now evaluation, uh, evaluating on some um, more uh, more standard uh, uh, benchmarks. So this is the Pascal probabilis probabilistic inference challenge. Um, and, uh, the, and each, uh, each column is the, the average of about maybe 14 instances of each column segmentation and uh, the belief them. Okay, so again, comparing to Roby, Neil Gibbs, and uh, various low rank relaxations. So in particular, the rank one relaxation have been tried before, and uh, you can see that uh, um, in the context here, it does not do particularly well. And it really pays if you go to even rank two. Okay, and that's when you outperform the new games. And we give you know, more. Well, so if you run new games for long enough, it actually gets you the right answer. So we, we, uh, we don't run it for an infinite amount of time, but a general amount. Okay, and uh, uh, even more general amount. With, well, Groby and Groby aims for the exact answer, but for the DBN case, it cannot get the exact answer. So uh, that, that's why its uh, performance is actually slightly lower than some of our numbers, despite having a long formation. Um, so remember, when we do randomized rounding, we can actually generate uh, samples from the model. So each random hyperplane you get, you generate a sample. And uh, you can compare this to samples from uh, apes. So in the top plot is the uh, current RBM trend on So you can see that uh, uh, so RR stands for randomized uh, relax and run. It gets some uh, um, samples on the right right, having very high probability. So, so x is the uh, x axis is the log probability that gives is not get. But Sure, it gives isn't trying to get the highest probability samples. It's just trying to get samples. Um, so we, we compare to the gives for, for, the, for the task itself, but it's interesting to see what kind of uh, distribution we get from the randomized runnings. And uh, it's very uh, problem dependent. So for different uh, problems, you get massively different running distributions. So the, the theory actually protects you against the mean of the the randomized runnings, but uh, in practice you shouldn't always take the max, and if you investigate these uh, the distributions in the max, is uh, much better than the mean. Okay, so given the samples, you can also use it to do uh, to estimate the partition function, but use, say, important sampling, but uh, not particularly natural. So uh, well, that's uh, basically the work. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we're pursuing, we are still continuing to work on some max aspects of this, like incorporating learning, um, tightening the relaxation using hierarchies, and others. So uh, yeah, we presented a uh, randomized relax and run method and evaluated it in a few tasks and uh, generated some near time samples. Can the next speaker come up and get his second set up? I'm oh, sorry, I missed how you would embed it in the relaxation in the uh, new opiates. Sorry? How did you embed the relaxation in the new opiates? Embed the relaxation into a new opiates. Uh, so that's, you're, you're referring to one of the columns. Yeah, so, so you can use the uh, relaxed solution as the initialization point. Yeah. 
the use to solve the real SLD. Yes, yes, no, in many instances. So one, yeah, the if you solve it locally, the optimum converges very quickly to the actual SDP value. So the same value. The same value. So as long as you go to like rank eight or so, you don't, you don't really have a gap. Okay, so let's thank Cedar again. Next talk is learning semantic script knowledge.